Hi guys, I am going to take you through my um, exact Lightroom workflow and show you one of the hacks that I love that I don't think a lot of people use and my Photoshop workflow and just kind of show you in Photoshop what you can use on a daily basis just in a really practical way um, and the things that I use consistently in Photoshop. Of course, Photoshop is a huge program so you know there's a million things you can use but um, you know, in order to make it practical and something that you can use today and something that I think will benefit any image that you're working on, I'm just going to show you the basics. And then if you guys want to see like specific tutorials, just let me know. Um, and if it's something I know how to do, I will make them. I have no problem making them. Also, excuse any background noise here. I have um, my dogs are always surrounding me and they <laughs> tend to make some noise. So, okay, let's start. Um, Lightroom workflow it goes like this. Okay, so we do exposure first. Then we choose a preset. Um, then we're going to fix our white balance and our profile. Um, which one you know you fix first will kind of depend on the image. Um, then you're going to tweak the basic panel if needed, and then um, any brushes that you're going to use. So let's start out by doing that. So um, exposure first. This is pretty well exposed for what I want for this image. Um, you know, I don't mind that the makeup artist is a little bit underexposed and I like this window light on her face. So I'm not going to bring the exposure up too much, maybe just a little bit. Um, I lean towards overexposure rather than under. Um, I just think, you know, I don't know, I like, I like lighter images. I guess it comes down to that. But, um, and often I will start a little bit higher than I need. Um, just so I can see better the tones. And I specifically chose this image because I'm going to show you how um, to fix your white balance if it if one of the presets doesn't automatically look perfect and in this case um, I already know that 01 and 03 are not right for this image um, but in this case I am going to have to choose between 2.1 which is um, very bright and warm or 2 which is going to need some warmth um, so I'm going to choose 02 so I've fixed my exposure I've chosen a preset and now I know by looking at this, I can see blue undertones. So all I'm gonna to need to do is add in some warmth. Um, so the first thing I would do before I even touch white balance is come up to my profile here and just pull that up and see how much of a difference that makes. It does help, um, but I still can see some blue undertones in her skin. So what I'm gonna do now is just pull that profile back to default of 100, and that's usually right about where I leave it. And I'm just gonna come, actually I'm gonna zoom into her skin so I can see the undertones. And I'm gonna come to temp and just lift it up gently until her skin looks good. Yep, right there. Yeah, that might be a little warm now that I've zoomed out, so I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit and that's perfect. Um, okay, so now that I have my white balance set where I want, I'm gonna pull my profile down to zero and I'm gonna slowly add in the um, golden honey coppery tones until I like it and yep I like it at about a hundred but I do that just to be sure you know that a hundred is good it usually is sometimes I want more sometimes I want less um, okay so the third step is to look at your image and see what else does it need maybe it needs a little more exposure you can go back and adjust that after you've done these and you know maybe you need to adjust your highlights and shadows and all that stuff too I very rarely use the shadow slider. I just don't like the effect. This is a super shadowy image, so I could pull it up just a little bit, but I'm mostly gonna work with the blacks here. Um, I just like the way blacks brightens the whole image and not just the shadows for me. So that looks good right about there. And let me show you, let's see. It's actually not going to work on this image because there's nothing to straighten. <clears throat> but the third, or the, not the third, the final step that I will do here before I uh, move on to my brushes is to make sure that the image is straight. And this one is, I have another image down here that this is going to work really well on. But I will always come down to the transform tab and hit auto. And just see, yeah, in this case, obviously there's nothing to transform, so that didn't do us any good. But, um, yep, then I would straighten it if it needed straightening. It doesn't. And while I'm here, I'm gonna show you guys how I um, crop. So I like to keep my focal points on one of these lines and ideally at one of the intersections. Um, I may pull this in just a little bit and then I'll always put um, the aspect on four by six. 
and just get my focal points right. And that's good right about there. Yep, but that is how I crop. All right, so this is done for me in um, Lightroom. There's really not a whole lot more I can do to this considering it's so shadowy. And what I actually ended up doing with this photo when I delivered it was um, I made it black and white and look how beautiful that is. I, when I'm deciding whether I want an image to be color or black and white, um, I look at the contrast. So uh, the contrast and tone. So I have this, you know, her face is illuminated by natural light. And then we have all these deep shadows here. And anytime you have shadows in an image like this, especially skin shadows, you're gonna have a hard time with the skin tone. So if I can avoid having to mess with these shadowy skin tones, I will avoid it by just making it black and white. And look how pretty that is. It really just draws her um, face to the center. Um, you still can see these really pretty highlights in the makeup artist's hair, um, and that's just gorgeous. Actually, what I would do and what I think I did do was went back to a, a linear gradient and just brought that exposure up over here just a touch so it doesn't look too harsh. Yeah, that's what I did for this image. I did deliver this. I'm just using my most um, recent images. So after I've straightened and cropped, my final um, step in Lightroom will be to use any masking that I want to use. I always, always, always use the Make It Pop Radial Gradient. Um, I'm not going to show those. They're the, the only brushes that I have not given away for free, and I would like to just keep that. You know, it's kind of something special for people that have the pack, but um, the Make It Pop Radial is, I, I mean, I've been editing in Lightroom for a very long time, and these are the perfect settings in my opinion to just um, you know give something a little bit of extra dimension and a little bit of extra sharpness um, you know and it's not noticeable it doesn't look like you slapped a radial on it um, but anyway I would put that right in the center and make sure my feather is at a hundred and I'll just use exposure so you can see where I would put it but that's where I would put make it pop and let's see yep and so what I'm gonna want to do in Photoshop is just clean her skin up a little bit um, I'm not really big on um, skin retouching but this light is so unforgiving that she's in here and this is a bridal portrait so in this case I would you know go the extra mile and, and kind of clean that up actually now that I'm looking there is one other thing I would do I would take a brush Give it the brush a little bit of exposure and just lift the shadows and the highlights a little bit. And I would brush over her hair. Not so it looks super obvious, you know, because this is in the shadows, so you want to keep that natural, you know, looking darker than the rest. But I just want to pop those highlights out a little bit so you can see that detail in her hairdo. Okay, so we're done with that here. I'm actually going to turn it back to um, color. I think that'll be easier for us to see what we're doing in Photoshop. Okay. All right, now for Photoshop, if you have the $10 a month Adobe Photography plan, you can download Photoshop as part of that plan. You don't have to pay anything extra. Um, so once you have Photoshop downloaded, come up to Photo, Edit In, and Edit In Photoshop. And this is how I finish all of my images. Um, and this is really, if you've never used Photoshop before, um, I'm going to I'm going to walk you through um, levels, healing and cloning, um, the sharpening and finishing action that I have, and how I save as for web and print. Um, there are just so many cool things you can do in Photoshop, but again, these are just the real basic um, things that you can apply today to make your images better. And you don't have to look at Photoshop as something that you need to learn all at once. You know, pick out what is most relevant to you and just learn that. Like. Um, frequency separation for skin is like skin smoothing is such a good tool um, I will make a tutorial on that specifically too here in the near future um, but just think about what you can use you know for your own work you don't have to learn the whole thing I mean I've like I said I've been working in Photoshop for probably 20 years and I still you know don't know some of the functions so don't worry about learning it all um, okay so to clean up her skin there is a better way to do this and it is frequency separation but that's too long for what we're doing here so um, I'm just going to show you how I would do it if I didn't have the time to go through frequency separation 
So I'm going to come over here. All of your tools are going to be, whoops, I didn't want to click that, are going to be on the left-hand side here. And if you don't know what something is, just kind of, um, if you click on it, wait, where is it? I thought you could hover over these. Can you hover over them? Give me a second here. Maybe my Photoshop is just really slow. Click off. Oh man, you guys, my computer is just so stinking slow. I've done something here that, oh, select subject, select mask. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Let me see if I can undo. Nope. Okay. So here, this little um, band-aid looking thingy here, this band-aid icon. Oh yeah, it's selected. It's actually a really cool feature. You can select. Let me see how it selected that. Now, if I wanted to move that, I could cut her out and move her somewhere else. I don't want to do that. Um, but what that was was the object selection tool here. Um, so let's get rid of that. And that was just a mistake. I didn't mean to show that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use our healing tool. It's this little Band-Aid. And I'm just going to zoom in. And I'm just going to take... Um, you want to make sure that your um, little tool is the right size. So come up to the top here. Um, this I, I never use. If you look at the icon and you click this little drop down, it'll say no tool presets defined for current tool. I have never used that function, so just ignore that. Um, you'll see here this little circle with the number. If you click that drop down, that's where you can change your size. Um, hardness just means how soft will your edges be on this tool. Spacing I don't bother with, um, but yeah, size is the only thing I would really suggest you play with it um, with the healing tool and then that's all you need to do there and then you just come through and I will kind of just quickly soften out any um, contrasty areas here and I'm literally just clicking and dragging over you kind of have to be careful um, healing is different from cloning and I'm going to show you that too but healing is different from cloning in the sense that um, Photoshop is taking pixels that surround where you're clicking. So if I click here, okay, Photoshop just, you know, kind of watch where my cursor is. Photoshop has taken information from everywhere around it and um, sort of done its AI thing and decided how to do it. Now with cloning, you can um, control what areas around that you want um, sort of copied and pasted on. Um, and I really go into detail with these bridal portraits. I probably um, would use frequency separation if this was a um, color image, but I did make it black and white. Black and white's a little bit more forgiving. Um, but okay, so that's how I would use the healing tool just to really get some of those um, contrasty areas, soften those up, just whatever looks the most um, obvious to my eye, if you know what I mean. Um, so then when I zoom back out, that already looks softer. Now I'm gonna come over to the cloning tool. It's this little stamp right here, it's called, it is called clone stamp. So I'm gonna click that and now that's my clone stamp. And same thing, if you come up here um, on the top, you can change the size and the hardness. There are um, scenarios where I will want uh, hard edges on my clone stamp, um, but not in this case, I do want really feathered edges, so I'll leave it at zero. So here's how you use, let me click somewhere. Um, if you need to undo on a PC, it's hold down control and hit Z, and it's really easy to just do with your left hand as you're working. Um, okay, but let's zoom in here and I'll show you how I would do this. Let me get my brush a little smaller. And the other thing that I focus on with clone stamping is the opacity. Um, with skin retouching, I like to pull the opacity down just a little bit. Maybe I'd maybe put it at 60. Um, and the lower the opacity, obviously the lower the effect okay so what you're gonna do is click a clean area of skin okay and you're gonna hold down alt okay that's can you kind of see that how that changed the um, tool now you're gonna click and now your source has been defined so now I can click on an, any other area and it will um, yeah match to that clean spot of skin but you see how as I'm clicking my source area is moving. So what you can do if you want to be really in depth is keep choosing a source area, okay? See, as I move, watch that little, let me get closer so you can see. As I move, watch this little addition symbol. So let me pick my source 
and I click. And watch if I move over here, watch where that source goes. You can keep, you don't have to keep setting a source um, because Photoshop will choose a source for you based on where you've moved your mouse, okay? So that usually works out pretty well, especially on skin if you're just wanting to sort of blur it out. Um, but there are some cases where you will want to just continually pick a um, source area instead of letting Photoshop decide, okay? So let's zoom back out. Um, but you can get really, you know, specific and in-depth with skin retouching this way. Um, this is really relaxing for me to do. I don't know if it's like a... I don't have obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm like, I don't like when, you you know, people say that they do and they actually don't because it's, you know, very real, real for some people. I'm just very um, particular and I find these repetitive tasks very soothing. So um, I don't mind, you know, going in and... Um, you know, really cleaning it up well. It's just sort of an enjoyable um, process to me. But then, you know, think about how zoomed in you are too. I mean, I'm seeing all of these, but, you know, zoomed in, but when I zoom out, um, you won't see that little detail. So anyway, her skin looks really pretty. There's one other thing that I want to address here, and that's this little sort of smudge of makeup down here. Um, and I'll show you how I would fix that. I am going to take the clone stamp here, and I'm gonna make it a little bigger. And I am going to put my opacity up to 100. And I'm just going to even that out by clicking a source area right above. Because I want the tone to sort of be the same. And see how the source area is changing, like I said, on its own. And actually, you know what I should have done? I'm just erasing what I did. I should have brought that opacity down just a little bit and put it at 60. So let's do that again and you'll see the difference. I'm just clicking and just softening that area. There's got to be a better way to do this. Um, I This is just how I do it, and it has always worked for me. Um, but, you know, if you know a better way, go, you know, feel free to share it. Um, but, yeah, you really kind of do have to play with the opacity to get it um, how you want it with the, these, like, cloning shadows, you know what I mean? Because um, really all you're doing is layering color over color here. But it is a really quick way to... Um, See how that, when you zoom back out, um, it just kind of cleared that shadow up. Uh, let me show you what the original looked like here. See that? And I did that, if you know, if I hadn't been talking, I did that in just a couple minutes with um, cloning and healing. I would go back in here and sort of, my opacity's at 30, that's good. I'm always changing the size of my brushes. I would soften this shadow here by just doing a little bit of cloning over it with a source, um, with a skin source that's a little bit lighter. And yeah, that was a very quick uh, skin retouch. And that's not perfect, like I said, I, I just kinda wanna show you guys the um, process and my thought process and the methods, but um, I would take the time for a bridal portrait to make that perfect. Um, and then let's go back to Lightroom and I will show you the other finishing um, actions after I show you this photo. Okay, so let's go to this one. Um, okay, so again, our steps in Lightroom for our workflow is exposure, choose a preset, um, fix your white balance and your profile, uh, fix anything in the basic panel, and then go to any brushes. And I always recommend you use the Make It Pop um, filter or radial filter. Okay, so let's fix our exposure here. And I'm going to choose a preset. And I already know, let's see, I like 2.1 here. And this is the little hack I was telling you guys about that I don't think enough people utilize. Come all the way down to the bottom to your Transform tab, okay? And just click Auto and watch what happens. Look at that. Um, this may not be the best example. There are times when you click Auto and it is really amazing, but it straightened that out for me. It will, um, you know, make all of your vertical lines, like it's just amazing. So. You can do this manually, like with the vertical up and down, um, you know, horizontal, you can go this way. But I prefer to just try auto and see how it does, usually usually nails it. So after I've done that, um, I would do that at the end. But I will go in and fine tune the um, lines by <clears throat> coming to crop and straighten. And then what I do is click here 
And then you can adjust it with your, um, uh, what do they call that, like little scroll bar on your mouse. And that's how you can really get it perfect. Um, of course, you can drag it, but that goes too fast for me. So I will just click it once and then use my little um, scroll bar. And what I'm looking at is I will find a vertical or a horizontal line, whatever I'm matching up to. I will um, click that and then watch that vertical line and I can just see when it's perfect, you know what I mean? Um, and it turned out it, that it was perfect at zero, but that's how I do that. I already like the crop and the composition. Um, so I've applied my preset, it was 2.1, pretty much one click, just looked at exposure. Um, my white balance, I really like the white balance this way. So let's come up to our next step, which is to drag our profile down to zero and just slowly lift it until I like the amount of warmth. And I like it just under 100, maybe about 85. Okay, um, our next step then is to look at our shadows and our highlights and anything else we may need to tweak in the basic panel. Um, I'm a big fan of lifting blacks, so I'm gonna do that here just a little bit. And then I would come up to, no, I, I'm done in the basic panel, so I would come up to any masking, any brushes I wanna do. Um, in this case, all I would do is put the Make It Pop radial over them again I'm not gonna you know show those settings but use exposure here to um, demonstrate that's where I would put it and I'm actually gonna pull that back down because the exposure and make it pop is not that bright um, but yeah now I'm done in Lightroom with this and now let's go over our Photoshop workflow with this photo so we'll edit in Photoshop and again the only things I use on a consistent basis in Photoshop is levels um, healing and cloning, um, sharpening, you know, my sharpening and saving action, and then saving as. And I always save as from Photoshop. Um, okay, so we didn't do levels in the last one, so I'm going to show you levels here. I know a lot of you have seen this, just fast forward if you've already seen it. Um, but come up to adjustments over here on the right hand side. And then second to left here, this little um, crown icon is your levels. So click that. And this is going to expand your dynamic range. So it's going to make the amount of space between your blacks and your whites wider, which is gonna make your image pop. Um, okay, so first thing you wanna do is click this little caution symbol, and that will do some adjusting on its own. And now you have three points here. Um, to the far left is your blacks, middle is your midtones, and the right is your whites. So for the levels trick, all we're gonna do is pull this white point into the edge of the histogram, and you can go further with it um, to make it a little brighter, or you can um, not, you know, you don't have to pull it all the way into the end of the histogram. Just do this until it looks right to you. Um, I would pull it into right about there, and then I'm gonna do the same with my blacks, and watch what happens. See how much you can um, get out of this little, little tool here. I'll show you with this too. And as you're moving your white and black point, um, your midtones, if you watch that little middle um, point, is adjusting automatically. So this is really, there's nothing like this in, in Lightroom that compares, in my opinion. Um, and that's why I bother with this, because if there was something like this in Lightroom, I would probably know about it by now, and I just don't think there is. Not that I have found, if you guys know of something, I would love to be able to do this in Lightroom, I just don't think you can. Okay, so after we've adjusted it how we want, come down to one box here, and um, these little four horizontal lines, you're gonna click, yeah, we're in the layers. Um, there's three tabs up here, so make sure you're in layers. And then click those little lines, and you're gonna flatten image, okay? And that makes it one solid layer um, for you to keep working on. Okay, now what I wanna show you is um, how I remove objects and what you can do um, to do that really easily. So I'm gonna zoom in here, and there is a fallen bow that looks like a cat. Um, <laughs> the first time I shared this photo, I hadn't noticed it, and somebody said, why is there a cat in the aisle? And I looked and I was like, yep, that definitely looks like a cat. Um, and just for fun, I went in and like drew a tail on it, not, not to deliver to them, but it does look like a cat, so I wanna get it out of there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start out with the um, clone stamp here. So we'll click that. And um, I'm just gonna take areas of um, floor surrounding and stamp over that to get rid of it. So I'll show you how I would do it. 
I'm gonna come up and adjust my size a little bit, make it a little smaller. I do want the edges soft for this, so I'm gonna leave the hardness at zero, and I'm gonna pull the opacity all the way up because I don't want to see any of that cat bow when I'm done, okay? So I'm gonna start over here at the end. I'm clicking Alt, holding Alt down while I click. Now my source is defined and I can just start clicking. I always give it a couple of clicks. Um, even though my opacity is, is at 100, let me show you what happens when you only click once. And I'll zoom in so you can see it. If you just click the clone stamp once, even though that's at 100 opacity, it really didn't cover everything. So um, I will just, actually I'm gonna make it smaller. The smaller your clone stamp, the more realistic it's going to look, um, but it depends on how much time you have to get it done. So I'm just clicking through here. I like to click different source areas so that it looks realistic. And any time you're clone stamping and there are vertical or horizontal lines, follow those. It's gonna make it look so, um, you know, realistic. So I'm following those up. I see horizontal lines here, so I'm following those up. Okay, and I just like to kind of piece it out like this until it looks right to me. Now there's a line here that I can um, match. So what I'm gonna do is take my, my um, clone stamp brush here, sort of, and I'm gonna sample that spot. Now watch when I hover over where I wanna cover up. That line, you can see it, so you can see where it's gonna go. Now I'm gonna give it a couple of clicks and look at that. I mean, barely looks clone stamped at all. Now this can get tricky because I can't see what's underneath there. You know, I assume it's these thingies, but I can't see them and I don't really have anywhere to sample from. So I'll show you what I would do. Anytime I run into this kind of situation, I will see if there's anything that mirrors it. And in this case, there is something that mirrors it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to copy this image. So I'm gonna come up to, um, where is it? <clears throat> layer, yep, um, I'm coming up to layer and I'm going to, duplicate that layer. No, nope, that's not what I wanted to do, guys. I will show you how I typically do this. I was trying to find an easier way for you guys to do this, but um, this is how I do it when I need to sample something else. There is a way to duplicate your image and make it, you know, a new one, but here's how I do it. I'm just going to be honest. This is how I do it. I don't want anybody to tell me I'm wrong, but if you want to tell me I'm wrong, that's fine. So I will come back to Lightroom and just pull another copy of it into Lightroom or into Photoshop. Um, and again, like I taught myself Photoshop. No one taught me. I've never taken a class. Um, so some of these things I'm probably doing, you know, technically wrong, but um, you know what? They work for me and that's what matters to me. So um, anyway, so here is where I want to, you can barely see it now, but I want to take this and paste it over here. So I'll show you how I will do that. I'm going to come to my second image. I'm going to zoom in. And um, what I need to do is select that, right? So I'm gonna use the lasso tool for that, third from the, from the top here, and I'm gonna click it. And I'm just gonna use the lasso. And again, there may be a better way to do this, I don't know, but this is how I do it. So I'm just gonna draw over the area that I want to sample, and I'm gonna cut that out. So I come, come up to edit, cut, okay? And let me zoom back out here. Actually, let me undo that and show you what I should have done. <clears throat> um, I want to feather this a little bit, okay? So come up to feather and I'm just going to pick 10 pixels because I want it fairly feathered, okay? So um, that's going to, however many, like the more pixels, the more feathered it's going to be. Okay, so let me come back to lasso. <clears throat> Sample this. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to cut and see how much more feathered those edges are. That's what I want. Okay, come back to our um, main image here. I'm gonna zoom in, and then I'm gonna come up to edit and paste. Now, obviously, that's in the wrong spot, and it's the wrong way, so what can we do? Um, you can come up to um, edit, and down to free transform, or transform. One of these two will allow you to um, manipulate that 
um, you know, what you cut out. So free transform will just put, I'll show you, it'll just put this box around it that you can move, okay? But we need to get it flipped around. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, edit, transform, and then it has this drop down here. And I am going to flip it horizontally. Now it's facing the right way. Um, and I can just sort of match it up there. And then I'm gonna come in after I'm done um, placing it. That looks pretty good to me. I'm just gonna click enter to get the um, free transform box off. Zoom in a little further. Now I'm gonna do some erasing so there's no um, you know, weird demarcation there. Um, so I'm gonna make sure I'm clicked on my layer. And if I click on and off of this layer, you can see where I put it. So how do I erase? I come over here to my tools and I choose the eraser, it's right here. Oh, I was right, if you hover over these, they do show you what each tool is. Um, I don't know why it wasn't doing that earlier. I swear you guys, Photoshop and Lightroom are sometimes just, I can't, like you can't explain why something is working or why it isn't working, you just have to be patient. Um, all right, so let's come up to our um, tools here. I'm gonna make it a little smaller. And I yes, I definitely don't want hard edges on this eraser. I want it very soft, so I'm gonna leave it at zero percent hardness. I could go in and change my opacity too. I may actually do that to make the eraser a little bit less um, noticeable. And I'm just gonna erase, bring back whatever I think should have stayed. So that actually looks pretty good right there. Just kind of clicking over it. And now let's zoom out and see how we did. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Yep, look at, you would never know that bow was there, right? I could further go in, and I don't know what this black thing is here, um, but I could, maybe somebody's like, I actually don't know what that is at all. Um, it's hard to say. But anyway, so that's how you use clone stamp and, um, you know, taking mirrored parts from other images and, and playing with them. Okay, so let's finish up with our sharpening um, sharpening action and uh, finishing action so next the last thing we need to do with this here is just flatten this um, so it's one image again so we're just coming to flatten image now we have one image now I'm going to show you how I save and I have showed this before so if you don't need to see this um, you can be done with the video now but um, I'm gonna create a new action um, I have two finishing actions here for myself I have one that um, applies uh, unsharp mask, which is professional sharpening. Um, I convert to sRGB so I can print, and I convert the profile, um, or no, I'm sorry, I convert the mode to 8-bit, and then I um, convert to sRGB so that I can print. And then I have um, an action for no sharp if I don't want the image sharpened, um, which, you know, you don't have to sharpen everything if it's already really sharp. I don't, I don't do it. You know, you don't want over sharpened, so you have to just use your... Um, you know, use your judgment there, but then I just have the convert um, mode and profile. So here's what, how we create an action. You can just follow along with this. Um, let's see. Yep, make sure you're in the actions tab. And I'm gonna, there's a little addition symbol down here. You're just gonna click that. And you can name your action whatever you want. Um, I named mine finish, um, finish and no sharp, and I know what those mean, but you know, name it finishing action or whatever you want. Then you click record. And now you're not on a timer or anything. It's not recording anything you're doing other than when you specifically go to do something. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is apply my sharpening. And the reason I'm creating an action is because the next time um, you wanna do this, you won't have to go through the hassle of applying the sharpening and then changing the mode and changing the, um, you know, you can just click, click play and it'll do it all at once for you. It's really convenient. Okay, so here's how we do the sharpening. And sharpening, to be honest, is best done um, for the specific image, but I think I have my settings where it works for, you know, 90% of images, I would say. Um, and if you kind of drag up here in this um, example window, you can see when, you, when you're when um, you sort of hold, you know, left clicking and holding, you can see what it looks like before, and then when you unclick it, it will show you how much sharpening you've gotten there. Okay, so I have my amount at 100%. I have um, my radius at 1.5 and my threshold at 10. 
Um, amount is obviously, and you can look here to see, you may not be able to see on a screen recording, but you'll be able to see it in real life. Pull your amount up and down and look at that. You can totally see what that did. Um, but yeah, you can kind of get, get a feel for it. And feel free to change these to whatever you want. This is just what I've found works best for me, um, 100%. And then the radius is how many pixels it will, um, because sharpening, what sharpening is doing is just sharpening your edges, okay? Um, theoretically, you don't want to sharpen smooth areas. You just want to sharpen the edges of objects. So the radius is how many pixels it's, sh you know, picking up. So, so look at that. If we sharpen 10 pixels, it's sharpening that whole thing because this is teeny tiny. If you look back at the original image, this is teeny tiny. So there's not very many pixels in there. Um, probably about 10 pixels wide because sharpen the whole thing there. But I don't like, I mean, I like it down. 1.5 is good for me. And then um, let me show you a threshold too. Let me actually pull this up so you can see. Um, threshold has to do with the higher your, your threshold, the less it will. Threshold is essentially the difference between your bright areas and your, um, you know, darker areas and your edges. It's, it's really hard to explain. Just trust me that you want your threshold around 10. Um, that's, trust me, I have gone over and over and over this and tried a million different settings and these tend to be the best. Um, okay, so anyway, that ended up being long-winded, sorry, but go ahead and click OK after you've done that. And now we need to um, convert this so that we can print it and so that we can share it. Um, so right now, if you look down here, it'll tell you um, what your color space is. And right now it's Pro Photo RGB and we have 16 bit per whatever. Um, so we need to change that so that we can save it. So I'm gonna come up to um, image mode, oops, image mode, eight bits a channel. That's what it is, channel. Okay, and now that's recorded. Now our last step is to come up to edit, convert to profile, and we want um, sRGB for you know best printing results. And if it doesn't default, it probably will default to that. Just go in there and, and click it and click OK. And now we have everything we need in our finishing action. We can come over all the way to the left as a little stop symbol. Click that and now you have your action. That was action one for me. And the next time I come into Photoshop, I can just click that and click play down here and it will apply your um, sharpening and everything else. So, and then here's how I save. Just come up to save as. Yep, it's gonna be really slow. I desperately, desperately need a new machine to edit on, you guys. So I know, I know so many people know the, um, the dilemma because people ask about it every day in the group. But I come down to save as type, JPEG, and then just choose your folder and save. And save, and that's it. Um, I think that's it, guys. I think I've gone over yeah, I've gone over the workflow in Lightroom, um, my workflow in Photoshop. Again, if you guys want to see any really specific Photoshop um, you know, tutorials, if there's something you're dying to know, I would love to help. Like I said, I am fully self-taught in Photoshop and I've been at it for over 20 years, so um, I may have different ways of doing things, but they work very well for me. So if you want to hear you know, from somebody who maybe does things a little bit differently, um, you know, watch different tutorials, but I think it's always good to see how other people do things. I even still think it's fun to go to YouTube and just see how other people, you know, um, sharpen their photos or see how other people use the clone stamp. You know what I mean? It's just interesting and I feel like you can learn a lot from watching um, different people's techniques. And Lightroom and Photoshop are such massive like beasts of programs that there are different ways to do things. And you know, it's not necessarily right or wrong, it's just really what works for you. And the longer you edit, the more you will develop your own um, you know, workflows and ways of doing things. So that's that. I'm gonna try to put some timestamps in here so you guys don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want. And that's it, I will let you go. I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Thank you for being here, bye.